3D Feathers on My Glasses Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to be showing you a tutorial for these glasses. So these glasses are from Firmu, and if you guys haven't seen any of my past reviews on Firmu in general, I my opinion stays true. I really like their quality. I think that the ordering system is pretty simple and they ask you enough measurements that you know that you're going to be getting something that fits. They ask for the distance between your pupils which it really helps with making sure that the prescription is accurate which is nice because it's no fun to have a prescription that is just a little bit off and you know that you just can't see things as well as you should be able to. And this time I decided to add a blue light protection on them which makes it so that you get kind of like this little blue sheen every once in a while in the corner of your eye, which doesn't really bother me, it's just interesting. And hopefully it will help protect my eyes from all of the time I spent editing these videos when I'm looking at my computer screen for hours at a time. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. I have a cute little acrylic feather down this side. Haha, <laughs> don't get them off. <laughs> and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to start by showing you guys the new glasses I got, and like I said, they are from Firmu. One thing that I really love about this company is they give you a carrying sleeve, a case, a cleaning cloth, a little screw kit with a little screwdriver and backup screws in case you lose some, which my screws I know are always loose, so that's a, a nice little benefit. <laughs> um, and then here's the glasses. I'm always really happy with their quality. They seem like they're very well made. The lenses are nice and thin. The blue light, as you can see, you can kind of get that reflection in there. It's just kind of funny. I didn't know exactly what to expect with it. But now on a piece of paper, I'm going to take and I'm going to draw out the shape of the feather that I'm going to be putting on the temple of the glasses. So I decided to give it kind of a little swoop appearance. So there's my base swoop line and I'm using a marker or like a marking pen that I know will bleed through to the other side of my paper. That way I can flip it over and I can do two feathers that are mirror images of each other. So I'm going to lay a nail form backing on top of my little drawing. And the great thing with nail form backings is that clear sticker paper, or not clear, but the sticker paper is clear enough that you can see your drawing on the paper through it so that you know exactly what it is that you're supposed to be sculpting. And then take white acrylic and sculpt your feather. So I just took in the beginning and I'm just laying down bead after bead of white acrylic to fill in my shape. And since it is pretty big, depending on the size of your brush, the brush I'm using is a 10. You may or may not need to do as many beads that I did, or if you're using an eight or a smaller brush, you may need to use some more, and that's more personal preference than anything else. So then you're just going to want to take and you're going to start carving in the shapes of the quill down the center of the feather and then the little barbs coming off of it. And since you are, if you did end up using as many beads as I did, you're going to find that some parts of your feather might be almost too set to work on and some parts might be really soupy still. So you have to kind of go back and forth and work on it section by section along with how set the acrylic is. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're working on it. And maybe if you're using a really fast setting acrylic, you won't be able to sculpt the entire feather and then go back through and add the details. And like I said, that is personal preference to what kind of acrylic you have. So once that is all set and ready to go, glue that on to the temple of your glasses. So just to add, put some nail glue down and then hold that in place for a second, open up the glasses, and then you'll be able to fill in behind that with a little bit of clear acrylic. So if you didn't do this, it would be fairly, I don't want to say it'd be weak because, you know, it's not necessarily weak, but it, a little bit more fragile than it should be. Especially, I mean, I know from my personal life, my glasses are going to be removed from my face by a nine month old day after day, every time she sees me wearing them. So I need to make sure that they aren't just going to break in a tiny little fist. And so after you have that where it's all secured on there, I'm going to wash over it with a layer of diluted white paint. And then before that paint dries, so you want to do it a little bit thicker so that it's going to be wet for a bit more time than maybe you normally would. Dip your brush into some teal paint and just sort of wash over it and brush it up. So start on either end of your feather, it really doesn't matter, and just kind of don't blend it in entirely, but just very feather-like strokes just blend that in so it creates a really kind of soft fluffy gradient. Now I'm going to take some burgundy paint and I'm going to be adding some little details and some shattering, uh, shadowing around the quill of the feather. So just take in to that around the bottom edge and then brush those lines out towards the edge of the feather so that it has just like a little shadow going around and that's going to make it have so much more detail. Funny thing, so this video was partially edited on my computer and it was in about this section of the video that was up and I had my computer closed and I was doing other things and then I opened it back up and I just briefly saw this part where I had that paint on my thumb and quickly before I was moving on to other things I thought that I had a huge cut on my thumb. I'm like, when did I get that? And then I had to go back and look. I was like, oh, 
duh. You didn't have a cut on your thumb, dork. You put paint on there. These are the kinds of things that roam through my head constantly throughout the day. But anyways, then go through and do it to the other side of your feather so it goes out. If you didn't want it to be quite so contrasting, you could even do it just with full strength of your teal and your pink paints because you did blend them into the white. They're not going to be as intense of a color as they would have been. So if you didn't want this to be quite so contrasty of the pastel colors with the dark then you could have done that. But I decided that these glasses in general, there's so much pattern happening on them that I almost wanted the art that I added to them to kind of simplify them, if that makes sense. So I went with pastels a little bit more simple than I might normally. I added a little bit of highlighting with white, not too much because I did want to keep that color and that gradient in the background visible as much as possible. So just add a couple little streaks here and there. And then with some silver glitter gel polish, add just a touch of that silver glitter here and there, little tiny bits. And then with some matte gel top coat after that silver has cured, brush that over as thin of a coat as you possibly can. As you see, I'm really just kind of almost pressing it into the grooves of the design. Cure that and then I'm going to take some nail glue and I'm going to glue on four rhinestones along just the base of that feather. So I started out with a medium sized, or actually it's the largest sized rhinestone that I was using here. And I placed that just a little bit in and then a really small one at the tip and then kind of the next two are going to ever be so slightly smaller. So I've got small, large, medium, small was my pattern if that hopefully makes sense. But I hope you guys like these glasses as much as I do. These are probably going to be my most wore pair just because like I said, I am on my computer all the time editing videos, which you know, I don't know if this will help protect me from the blue light, but you never know. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to know how I've been liking them so far, I can definitely answer them. I haven't had them all of that long, so I don't know how, uh, educated my answer will be, but I can do my best. Don't hesitate to comment with those and I will see you in my next video. Bye.